Okay, if you've noticed that the screen and time has jumped about three hours there, it's because I got sidetracked by fixing stuff I broke and trying to remake this because I've actually done this for an app I'm making before and I obviously can't put that code into this tutorial so I have to think of a way to do it differently which is actually really really hard to do. Okay but we're going to finish this off now. We have our the script fi file working away so now we have to actually implement it. So into your H file and we're going to define uh, to do k get Earl. It's going to be HTTP colon colon sorry, slash slash local host slash get JSON dot PHP and end. We need one inter one thing in our header. We need a NS mutable array called JSON. And that's our header file done. Okay, we're gonna to to make two methods here. One's called void get data. This is gonna be using the inbuilt new version of Xcode, which has the JSON um, built in. We're not gonna use any packages. NS data data, and then uh, void. Pardon me. Start and self start. So this is what's going to start everything off when this view loads. Because, pardon me, a view did load only loads once in a tad bar application. So we want to set this to refresh after certain happens. But we'll deal with that in one second. First of all, we have to make our thing do something. So. We're going to start off in our start file. So ns earl earl equals n ns earl earl with string. No, sorry, it's uh, earl string k get earl ns data data gr equals ns data data with contents with contents of Earl data with contents of Earl Earl happy days self get data data all right can you see where we're going next up to mr. data now this is our actual connection file this is what's starting off to get the Earl the Earl data now we're going to utilize that data so the JSON array is equals to ns json serialization json object with data our data is obviously going to be um, data options k nil options error crap I forgot that requires a dummy error file ns error error it's not going to do anything we're not going to program any errors just it's a just a filled constructor Alright, if you print that now, you get the same printout we we would have seen if you ran the script for this get JSON file. Okay, so that's it done. We now have a JSON uh, array built from our script. Now we have to use this in our actual table. So, numbers and section table, this should be nothing new to you. We want to return the entire amount of our um, JSON array. Perfect. Now, we want to display two messages in our cells, but I don't have time to make a new custom cell, so we're going to do a little bit of cheating. And we're going to change the table style, tables view cell style default to UI table to do subtitle. So this gives us an inbuilt way of using two, um, two, two, two labels in one cell. So first of all, we need NS dictionary to access the individual bits of the arrays. JSON array. Info equals JSON object at index index part dot row. So instead of actually assigning this ourselves, we're going to be taking bits out of the selection. Then cell dot text label new text label dot text. Don't forget the string equals um, info 
object for key name. Don't forget these are capitals because if you look at their return, they are capitals, not lowercase. Our lowercase are our given parameters, but the name is the actual. If you looked in the printout I didn't make here, but if you did it yourself, you would see name and message will come back with capital, so it has to be capital. Cell dot detail text label dot text detail text is the subtitle, which you'll see in a second. You've seen it before in I've applications. Object for key message. Alright. I do believe that's all we need. Now I'm gonna build on this, but my I'm gonna have an empty Okay, now we're gonna do something else first. Because we uh, did loads are only called once, we're gonna to have to implement something that will update the table view itself. Now I did it a different way on my own app, but as I said, I'm not gonna put that in the tutorial because it's mine and you can't have it. So I did a different way, which is isn't the best practice, but I give you an idea of how to implement a self sustaining kind of reloading. Okay, we have to make a, in this case we're going to make an NS timer and I think the best place to put that will be in our view to load. So NS timer my timer equals do, 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 NS NS timer timer with interval target. Okay so interval we're going to give it a uh, five seconds we don't want to be bombarding this too quickly target itself um, at selector start user info nil nope nil and repeats yes because we want us to keep on going not finished yet we have to put this on a run loop ns run loop main run loop. Now if you've seen this before you're probably screaming no no don't do this this is the this is not a good way to do it but as I said this is just to show you how to actually get this going. It's up to yourselves to play around this and make it better. I'd encourage you to make it better because this is just an example of how to do something. From mode NS default run loop mode. Okay there you go you've also had to use a timer. Perfect. Now my my um, table is empty because I was messing around with it and I had about 50 or 60 entries but that's all gone now so it's mine's going to be empty so this will show you live how it's going to be updating from a server without rebuilding the app once hopefully okay so see empty nothing there dead so I Elmo says hello one, two, three, four, five. I didn't put in reload data. Why did I forget to do that? Because I'm not a very smart person. How embarrassing was that? Oh, I even had it in my notes. Not forget this part. Self dot table view reload data. I can't believe I did that. That was just embarrassing. But I'm not restarting the video again. Okay, so you'll see the one in here, but. I say hello again. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And I'm going to put another few here. Just boogie, 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 post. Boogie, 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 post. There we go. Happy days. You're now adding stuff to a SQL server. It's been updated live. And if I delete one from the database, on the back end, we go back to our. Oh, look, it's gone. How about that? Let's delete the IML one. Wait for it to update. It is no longer in our system. How cool is that? As I said, tutorial, basic, probably a few little no nos, bad practice, all those things, but to do a very good example would take a very long time, which I'm not doing again. Okay folks, I'm going to end it now because this tutorial took far too long to make without giving away my trade secrets. Hope you enjoyed it. I know people were asking this for a while and I hope this makes sense and if you find a better way of doing this and you want to make a story yourself, 
go ahead and make it as best you can because I learned through videos and people doing this for free and I highly encourage you to do the same if you can help someone else. If you have any problems, give me a shout, I'll try and help. Alright folks, take it easy. Bye now.